Unity is sponsoring this video, and today we are going to see this arrow effect. Welcome guys, I'm Gabriel Aguiar, currently developing Rabbit's Tail, links below for more. And throughout the years, many people have requested arrow effects, so I kinda used Ash Ultimate as an excuse to make one. There's a few tricks we are going to see for a simplified version, so let's jump right into this. Oh, and if you wanna get this project, it's all available on my Patreon page, there's a huge library of visual effects that you can use in your games. So the Unity Asset Store is holding this huge spring sale which I highly recommend if you are looking for some quality tools such as Fill, which we are using a lot on Rabbit's Tail, to animate things like menus or the UI for example, among many other things such as feedbacks for when we hit enemies. Fill is a must have and it's on sale. All you gotta do is use the link below, just by clicking you are helping me and perhaps you'll find your next favorite tool on this huge sale. To be honest, the asset store is a big part of developing games, it really helps streamline your project. So click the link below guys, otherwise I will smack you in the head. So as you can imagine, we are going to need a 3D object, in this case, an arrow. In case you have one laying around, cool. In case you don't, I'm gonna show you how to create one in Blender. I obviously went a few extra steps and created a more detailed arrow, but I'm gonna show a simplified version, a quick one. So in Blender, let's select everything with A and press delete, so we can have a clean scene. And then with Shift A, we are going to start with a cube. Let's scale down this cube with S and lock it in the Z axis. You can type a value of 0.1 and press enter. And then you can press 7 on the numpad to go to the top orthographic view. And from here, we are going to enter in edit mode, we tap and press Ctrl R, press enter and then escape so this edge loop stays in the middle. And then press Z to see through and select with B, this right side vertice and press delete. As you can see, this is hollow, it's on purpose, we are going to use a modifier called the mirror, so it kind of mirrors this in the X axis. Let's enter in edit mode again, we tap and then press 7 on the numpad to go to the top orthographic view and by pressing Z to see through we are going to select this bottom left vertice with B press G and lock it in the X and then type 0 so it goes to the center now with Ctrl R we are going to add edge loop right here press enter select this vertice with B and with G lock it in the X and push it a little bit to the right because now we are going to go with Ctrl tab switch to faces and select this face right here and press E to extrude it along the Y axis, exactly like this, a value of 3 and then extrude again, a value of 1 and Ctrl Tab switch to vertice and select this left vertice and with G lock it in the X and push to the left. You can also select this and push it a little bit in the Y with G and there we go, we have a very simple arrow. Let's drag a new window from this bottom left corner and up here let's select UVs because it's super important and in the edit mode you can select everything with A, press U and select project from view. On the left window you will have these small quads that you can select everything and with S scale this up. Do not go beyond this square by the way and that's it. Let's rename this object on this panel, arrow for example. And by the way, if you want, you can select this vertice and with S scale it down on the Z axis a little bit. There we go, very simple arrow. With this arrow selected, let's press Ctrl A to apply rotation and scale. And let's go to a file, export as an FBX. You can export this directly to your project. Rename it, turn on selected objects and export it. In Unity, you can say the scale factor is 100. And then let's create an empty object, call it VFX underscore Ash Ultimate, for example, or Arrow Attack, whatever you feel like. Reset to Transform, create a new visual effect on a folder. 
You can parent this to the empty we just created and press the edit button to open VFX Graph. I'm just gonna drag this window to around here. And for this specific effect we don't need the output particle quad, instead we need the output particle mesh. Drag this line and search for mesh, so we can assign the 3D object we created, the arrow we just created, down here. Here we go, many arrows. This doesn't need to have velocity, let's, let's delete this. Lifetime it's going to be constant, for example 3 seconds, as a matter of fact you can always create properties to control in the inspector if you feel like it. I'm gonna create a float for example and rename this the lifetime of the arrow or arrow lifetime, 3 seconds for example, but you can create as many properties as you want, expose them so you can control them in the inspector. And up here we don't need this to be constantly spawning arrows, we just want one arrow at a time. So let's use a single burst with one particle. Here we go, looking nice. Let's already take care of the size. With the set size down here in the output particle mesh. Let's set it to 1. It's huge, I know. You can as well add the set scale if you want to control the X, the Y and the Z axis separately. Let me just turn on a cube that I have here which represents more or less the size of a character. I'm gonna cut the set size in half, 0.5. Yeah, let's see if this will do. It's not rotated in the proper direction, so with a set angle down here, for example, we could say minus 90, right? But instead we need 90, minus 90 and 90, respectively in the X, Y and Z. So we can, in the update particle, use a add angle and say the X, for example, is 1. So it rotates on itself, as you can see, but if we were to use minus 90 in the X, yeah, we would have a few problems, as you can see. Okay, so we have the size, we have the motion. Let me turn off the cube. Now we just need to take care of the aspect. And it's going to be super simple for this effect. I'm going to use Krita to create a texture, a gradient, a very basic gradient. I'm going to create a new file with 2048 by 2048 pixels and with a black background, as you can see. And I'm going to select the gradient tool and up here I'm going to press the add button. The first key it's going to be black and the last key it's going to be white. As simple as that. And in our canvas I'm going to start at the top, hold shift and go to the bottom. So you can have this gradient right here. I'm going to export this now as a PNG to my Unity project and assign to the main texture. We are not going to use any shader for this specific effect but we could. The pointy end should catch the intention of the player, that's why it is white. I'm gonna use a set color now so we can add a bluish ice color, something like this. Increase a little bit the intensity. If you want, you could use a blend mode additive. Black values will be transparent, for example. Or you could go back to Krita and with Ctrl T, stretch this up so it isn't so black. Export again and in Unity now, you will have a different aspect to the arrow. Yeah, I'm gonna use this one and in alpha mode, by the way. So this is for the arrow. Now let's add some stretched particles so it looks like it's going fast. Spacebar, simple particle system. Let's already take care of the aspect and use the default particle that comes with Unity. It's always useful. I'm gonna say it's additive mode. And the orient, instead of facing the camera, it's going to be a long velocity vector. Let's control their size with a set size and say it's random between 0 0.1 and 0 0.5, for example. We also need a set scale, random again, between 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 for the x and 0 0.5 and 1 for the y. And the set size of our life can be from big to small, but it needs to have the composition set to multiply, otherwise it will overwrite the previous values. Set color of a life also needs to be in multiply for the alpha and the color because we are going to use a set color before the multiply color of a life with an icy blue color, something like that, increase a little bit the intensity. And now we need to take care of the motion of these particles, they need to go in the opposite direction compared to the arrow. So on this set velocity up here, we can say minus 2 and 0 0.2 for the x and the y, and for the z something like minus 2 and minus 10. Alright, looking good. Let's increase a little bit the radius of this with a set position, sphere, and decrease the radius of this sphere. Alright. If you guys want, you can increase the rate up here. What I'm gonna do now is create a new particle system because we are going to add smoke. 
and I made this realistic smoke texture free for you guys. Check out the link below. Once you have it, you can assign it here in the main texture. We just need to say the UV mode is in flipbook mode, in this case blend, so it blends between each frame and it becomes super smooth. Flipbook size is 6x6, we have, we have 36 frames. We just need to animate this flipbook with a set index over life. We are going to use this curve from 0 to 1, but the last key is going to be 35 for the value. Since it starts counting at 0, we have 36 frames. Here we go. On set size curve, it's going to go from big to small, but the last key should be around 0 at 7, more or less. So it doesn't go all the way to 0. We can also use the set color of a life and say these keys are more or less around here. It fades in and fades out the smoke. Let's use a set color which means set color of life needs to be in multiply mode for the compositions. And this set color have a specific value which is 0 0.45, 0 0.66 and 0 0.75 and we increase a little bit the intensity. Oh, and in additive blend mode, by the way. And now we can take care of the size as well, with the set size. Between 1.2 and 2.6, that should do it. You guys can try different values, obviously at any time. Let's make sure this has a different rotation for every texture, for every particle, with a set angle, random, between 360 and minus 360, only on the z-axis. And lifetime, yeah, let's leave it as it is for now. Let's do the same thing, minus 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 for the x and y, and for the z, minus 1 and minus 4, for example. Yeah, perhaps the lifetime should be smaller, 2.5 instead of 3. And let's control the transparency with the set alpha, random, between 0 0.1 and 0 0.4, for example. Here we go, looking very nice, actually. And if you guys want to make sure that everything has the same lifetime, the same duration, in this case of the smoke, can select the spawn, and the loop count is going to be constant, as well as the loop duration, and now we can use the arrow lifetime, take 5% off this, and connect to the loop duration, for example. And repeat this for the stretched particles as well. Constant for loop duration, loop count. Exactly. Whenever the arrow dies, it stops emitting smoke and particles. Okay, so... On my specific case, I have added a few more things. Like I said, arrow, I made it more detailed. But the idea now is to add trails, and I highly recommend you guys to check out this tutorial that I made a while back, which is Stylized Trails, and it's fantastic for this specific case, because you are going to learn how to create trails like this one. And once you have completed that tutorial, you will end up with some fantastic trails that you can add to your arrow, for example, or to many other effects. It's actually super useful. And if you guys actually want to know how to shoot projectiles, I made this tutorial a while back, which is how to summon creatures and I do a breakdown on how I shoot these creatures, basically. There's also this other tutorial that I made where we shoot projectiles in an FPS mode. So, that's basically it guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. It's all available on my patrons page, I made sure to include a lot of visual effects in there. There's an awesome library for you to use in your games or to study up close. And I want to say thank you to each patron that supported me last month. And a quick shout out to the top tier patrons, which are 3D Sorcery, Alex Beek, Alexander Brazy, Alvman, Aviat Tobali, Axel, Bluebird, Bonehead, Kruby Dubidu, Cyber Cradle, Daniel Schmidt, Diaku, Diana Simonian, Diego Marx, Duitran, Effect Yellow, El Sharif, Easy, Fang Striker, Fairy Online, Giri Andre, Giulio Bevenuti, Goblin Ply, Grub Lab, Guilherme Trindad, Goop and Zoo, Jason Marrero, Joseph Ballantyne, Casey Miller, Cabron Campi, Leanne Holt, Nutuli, Lim Green, Luke Hammer, Lucas Rocha, Manuel Mora, Mehmet Chakush, Minuzuki, Mosen and Seth Darden, Nicholas Morrill, Oitsk, Pong, Pradip Sen, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Robert, R. Lee, Travis McCollum, Verisuta, Will Hughes, Will Pulliam, Yeoshua Villas, Dong Mong Dong, and Ching Pyong Lee. Thank you all very much for your support, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks, bye!